Good evening, everyone. Nice to see all your faces over here. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for giving the pleasure of your presence over here tonight. And I beg for your compassion because I know I might be disappointed at some of you guys that I went to the internet and checked that Larissa, our friend from St. Pete, was supposed to be here tonight. But a Larissa called in sick, so she couldn't make it, she couldn't come. So if I disappointed some of you guys expecting a much more beautiful person, much more attractive and everything, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for that. Be, please be compassionate with me. But anyways, it's always an opportunity, even if it's a less a minute talk or a less a minute presentation, it's always an opportunity to learn something new or at least to remind us a few things on something that we have saw in the past, learned in the past, but we hadn't put in practice in, in the last moments or in the last, on the last, uh, last days or last months of our lives. And actually, every time that we walk in through a church, any kind of a religious temple or center or anything like that, we are just being reminded on what we should be doing. Because the law of God is written in our hearts and in our minds. As a sons of God, when he created us, he put that a little spark inside of us. And it's just a matter to follow that spark and then we'll find out all those laws and everything that we have to learn. So no matter what kind of a religions or what kind of a pathway we're falling through, but if you were looking for something, for sure we're gonna be find it because we just needed to be reminded. All of us, we have the same power, the same capabilities, the same source. We came from the same place, which is God. But one of the things that we have learned with God, and especially with the Jesus when he came to earth, is about compassion. And the compassion that we're going to be talking about tonight, we can find in the gospel according to Spiritism, chapter 13, item 17. But uh, what is compassion? How can we define it? How can we find in our lives? How can we deal with that? How can we live with that? What kind of benefits will bring to me? How do I uh, uh, embrace myself to follow the feeling, to follow the, the challenge that we have to embrace compassion and bring compassion as a daily activity that we can have on our lives? Anyways, first, first things first. What it is? How can we define it? And I brought in two types of definitions about compassion. The very first one is the one that we can find on the dictionary. I would say that's the earthly definition on compassion, which you can say uh, feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow for another who is stricken by misfortune, accompanied by a strong desire to alleviate the suffering. So on the dictionary, the human or the earthly definition it says it's a feeling. But when we go to the gospel according to spiritism, we find a slightly different definition that says compassion is the virtue which draws you closer to the angels. It is a sister to charity which also conducts you to God. So we have two slightly different approaches over here. One is a feeling, the other one is a virtue. But how we develop a virtue? A virtue is something that we carry with us and we practice it on a daily basis without even thinking about it. That's something that we have already inside of us. But uh, to develop the virtue, we need to change our lives or our, the way, our perceptions from reaction, from instinct to feeling. From something that we do automatically for something that we feel about it and we feel happy in doing that. And once we strive and once we get better on that perception and we change it from the act of instinct or reacting for something instinctively and we started to do that automatically because that's part of our nature, then we are becoming or transferring from the feeling to a virtue. So every time that we have an opportunity to be helping someone, to be compassionate about someone, and we do that without even thinking, that means that we already have that feeling inside of us, and when we embrace that, and then we have a virtue. But uh, going a little bit more forward, compassion is also an, a human emotion prompted by the, palm, the pain of others. 
more vigorously and than empathy, the feeling commonly gives rise to an active desire to alleviate another's suffering. In ethnic, ethical terms, the various expressions down the ages are so-called the golden rule, embodied by implication the principle of compassion. Do to the others what you would have done to yourself. That's what we call the golden rule. If you wanna, if you are in a situation uh, that you would like to be helped, do to the others what you'd like to do for yourself without having the others done to you. Help other people. Extend your braces, extend your, uh, your arms, extend, extend your hands. Give them the support that they might be in need. Because at the end of the day, or at the end of our lives, if you, if you may, we are all brothers and sisters. We might not be brothers and sisters by flesh or in flesh on this life, but we are all brothers and sisters because we came from the same source, from the same Father, which is God. So if I would like to be helped by my brother, I need to help him also. And when I do that, I put this true love into action because charity, which is a sister of, uh, of, um, of compassion, as we're gonna see later on, is the love in movement. So when we are acting towards someone to help, we are putting our love into motion. We are moving our love towards someone. And that's an exercise. And one of the best exercises that I ever seen myself personally, that's what we can find, found, find on the Gospels, uh, which is the parable of the Samaritan, of the Good Samaritan. When someone moves out of uh, his way, goes out of uh, his uh, comfort zone, let's say, let's put it this way, and go out to help someone. To help is someone that he doesn't know, he has no idea who it was, have no idea if the guy would be able to pay him back on what he was investing in time and money to help this, uh, this person. He's, he helped this person out of the streets or out of the pathway and then took him to him, paid for his stay. When he came back, then he was gonna find out who that person was. So his first action, his first thought was to help the person, not even thinking who it was or why that person was in that situation. He just helped it. That was his virtue into action. He didn't think, should I help? Should I don't? Who is this guy? I'm gonna spend some money. Does he can pay me back after I spend my money with him? He didn't even think about it. He just did it. He just let his love into action and help the person. So it's an exercise that we're gonna be developing um, on inside ourselves. What is the importance for us to leave this compassion go out of us? Uh, it's important because it's in present. One of the things which is important also is the compassion is present in the most important religions of the world. It's present on Christianity, in Hinduism, in Buddhism, in the Judaism, and on Islam as well. But how come? How come all, all of these religions, they preach the same thing? And actually, if you study deeply the religions, about 85 to 90 percent and all the teachings for all the religions, they are exactly the same. What is different is the way that we preach, the way that we follow, some procedures here, some um, um, different aspects or cultural aspects that you have here and there, but 85 to 90 percent on all the religions is exactly the same. It makes a lot of sense because all of them came from the same source, from the same Father, from the same God. We cannot, if we just have one God, one only God, the religions should be praying or explaining the things on the same way. It can't be different. But anyways, how is present in Christianity? How Christianity brings the concept of compassion to our life? Well, one of the most beautiful passages that we can do is uh, that we can remember from Christ is the Beatitudes we can find on the Gospel of Matthew, the chapter 5, talks exactly entirely about the Beatitudes. And one of these Beatitudes is, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So as I was saying a few minutes earlier, if you want to do or if you want to 
Life is, is an exchange. Whatever we give to life, that's exactly what a life is going to bring back to us. So if we would like to be helped when we are in, in need, we've, we need also to be helping people. Because if not, if you are not offering good things to life, life is not going to bring him back to that. It's always a, a matter of how you are offering and treating life. That's exactly how life is going to treat you back. Also, we can see the true Christian compassion, say the Gospels, should extend it to all, even to the extent of the loving one's enemies. Because our enemy today will be our brother tomorrow in flesh. Bec that's why in some families, for example, we have three, four brothers and sisters living all together. Three of them, they love each other, they play around, they grow up very nicely, and one of them is what we call the black sheep. That person that get, don't get along uh, for nothing that you have to do, everything that you try to bring that person is always running away, is so always someone that you're fighting, that we don't get along or anything like that. All raised by the same mom and dad, for the same mom and dad, for the same parents, but one of them is just don't get along. For sure, if you study the previous life for that person, that person has some kind of a differences that we needed to use, living as a brother and sisters, to get along. So it's better, much better to love your enemy today before this guy can be a, your brother, or even worse, your husband on a, future li on a next life. Then you're going to see the problems. So it's much better to, to love your enemies just right now when we have the opportunity to do so. And besides that, when we decided to love our enemy, we are working towards the perfection of our souls, the, our hearts and our feelings, because we got to practice and be humble. And that's quite a challenge. That's quite a challenge. Saying to someone, even then when you know that you are right, that you are just letting go, you are just giving it away, you are not pursuing what you think it's the most right things to do, because you are doing that in the name of love. It's very complicated. It's not all of us that are prepared every day and in every situation to practice that. But as soon as we can uh, perfectionate this, this behavior, the better for us. The sooner that we can get it, the better. In Hinduism, we can see compassion, or as they say, the importance of compassion in the Hindu traditions reaches as far back as the Vedas. The Vedas was what is the, what they call the sacred books for the Hindus, and it was written 2,000 years before Christ. The central concept, the particularly relevant to compassion in Hindu spirituality is refraining for harmfulness, is to avoid to do wrongdoings. It's not even to be compassionate or helping someone which is in pain. It's even avoiding to suffer or to cause a suffer to someone. It's even thinking before you are acting. So it goes beyond for just helping someone right there which is, in, which is in need at that moment. It's trying to avoid at all costs anything that can be harmful towards that person. It goes even forward or, or, or beyond than when, than when we can understand. On Buddhism, the, the aspects or the concepts of um, conception, the Dalai Lama has said, if you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. Because it's, it's, it's a strange thing. When you start to practice the good deeds, you start to feel so good about it. Even when you do that in a very small thing, very little things for one here and there, and you start to feel just like you are in peace of life, that you are you know, living in a different perspective or living on a different planet, you started to see or have a different perspective about somebody else's problems or even about your own problems. So when we started to create uh, this mechanism or doing goods or being uh, forgiveness or doing the compassion and everything, and we start to like the feeling that we have, and we start to do this in even more and more and more, 
the happiness will be coming back to us because we're going to be feeling very good about one, what we're doing. And there is a lot of ways to practice compassion, as we're going to see later on by the end of this talk tonight. We can do that in a, in a, in a, in a uh, X uh, number of ways that we can be compassion. It's not just helping people, giving money here and there, or talking to someone. There's tons of things that we can do. Compassion is that which makes the heart of the good move the pain of others. It crushes and destroys the pain of others. It is called compassion because it shelters and embraces the distressed. That's the definition given by the Buddha. On Judaism, we can see the compassion uh, on the Jewish tradition. God is the compassionate and is invoked as the father of compassion. One rabbi, 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 right? One rabbi has put it in this way. Kindness gives to another. Compassion knows no other. In a certain way, it's the same thing that we were saying before. We are all brothers and sisters. So when you were doing that, when you were being compassionate towards someone, you're not even looking to that person if uh, it's uh, just your neighborhood or your brother or someone. It's just someone that is your brother uh, towards God or in front of God. On Islam, in, um, it's very int interesting, this, this concept. In the Muslim tradition, uh, foremost among God's attributes are mercy and compassion. Whoops, be compassionate with me. I, I just didn't press this, okay? Each of the 114 chapters of the Quran, <coughs> with one single exception, begins with the verse, in the name of God the merciful, the compassionate. So each one of these chapters is start with the phrase, God the merciful, God the compassionate. So it practice and explains and brings to the, um, uh, for, for the Muslims, this very important and wonderful concept. But how is spiritism? How, how can we define this compassion? According to gospel according to spiritism in chapter 17 item 13 compassion is a sister to charity and without and as we can understand and as we learning on spiritism without charity there is no salvation and how can we define a charity according to spiritism on the spiritist book question 8086 uh, Alan Kardec asks us to enlighten spirits what is charity and the answers that we have is benevolence, indulgence, and forgiveness of all offenses, of all wrongdoings. So charity is something much more abroad. It's something much more uh, that embraces other concepts. We can say that, that the compassion, it's a, it's a little sister of charity because it's one of the ways that you start to practice charity without even feeling, without even thinking about it. It's when we are benevolent towards someone. That we just forget any wrongdoings, anything that it, that person can be done wrong, even if, if we know someone, or even if we don't know someone, we don't even think, what is there for me? Why should I be doing that? Why should I be helping that person? We don't even think on that. We just think that we are doing that because we were taught by Jesus to do it like so, and God is expecting that behavior from us. Because when Jesus came into the world, he's, he didn't come over here to build a church or to start a new church. Actually, Jesus didn't start any church. The first church was developed, was founded uh, three or four years after he had been crucified. So he didn't come over here to do that. He came over here to live on an earthly life, living as a human and showing us what God is expecting from us. He came to give the example. He came to teach us what God expects from us. So once we do that, and once we start to live like this, following his pathways, all of these feelings that we have is gonna be, it's gonna be coming out of our hearts a lot easier. And we'll be able to grow up ourselves a few steps towards the perfection. One day, we all will be as perfect as Jesus. Because if it wouldn't be so, God wouldn't be being just. 
why he would give it something better or different for Christ and not for me as we study God which is the all powerful the all justice the all love how come he would be being just if he gave something to Christ and John and John the Baptist that he didn't give to me he wouldn't be being just we all have the same opportunities we all have the same power we all came from the same source the only difference between Jesus and all of us over here I would say it's quite a few billion years that's all that's all we all be like him one day and actually he said that you are God you can do the things that I do and even more we just need to be prepared for that. And compassion and charity is one of the steps that we take towards that pathway, towards that, uh, the learning experiences that we might have. Coming back to the importance of, it, of, it, of compassion in our life. It's important because it's an act of love. When we give something to someone, we are practicing an act of love. It also helps to fight against our pride <coughs> and selfishness. Teach us the value of charity. And there is something interesting over here. A um, couple of weeks ago, I was talking to another friend of mine, and she just mentioned something to me that it was, it was unbelievably impacting. I never had thought in charity on that way. But as she said, the true charity only happens when we go out of your comfort zone to do something for someone. Because if you're not going out of your comfort zone, you aren't doing charity, you are doing a favor. It's something that we'll be doing to anyone, easy. But when you have to go out of your way, when you, go to have, when you have to go out of your comfort zone, you are really mad about that person, about that situation, and what you were doing. Because if it's something that I can do out of my desk with a phone call in the middle of my break or lunch or something like that, I'm not doing anything. I'm just doing a favor. And this practice of act of love, this fight against pride and selfishness, is when we go out of our comfort zone. Because not being pride, forgetting about us, you gotta agree with me, it's totally out of our comfort zone. But when we do that, we have a true opportunity to serve as a Christ disciple because we are following his words and his teachings. And that's why we are all here. We are not here to suffer. We are not here to pay what we have done wrong doing in a past life. We are not doing here, and we are not here because these or because of that, or because, you know, I have this situation that I have to pay. No, we are not here for that. We are here to experience this, to live the experiences and see how we're going to be using our free will in each one of these experiences. And how we use the free will will bring us the consequences that we'll collect later on on this life or in a future one. So, in other words, we are all here to learn. And if we have the opportunity in front of us, and we have the opportunity to learn, to be compassionate, to be charitable, or not to be charitable and not to be compassionate, which one will bring us closer to God faster? Which one will bring the most uh, wonderful or nice consequences that we can collect in the futures. Which one is going to put us or clarify our hearts and make our feeling and the flow of energy that we have around us even brighter? We all have the same options. How are we going to be using it? It's up to us. But as I said a little earlier, there's a lot of ways that we can practice c uh, c uh, compassion. One of the ways that we can do is to offer your shoulder. Not in the chair over here in the church for people to sleep or take a nap. Please do not do that. Okay? Please. Not tonight. Not, not on my turn. Okay? Please. Don't do that. But when you go out, when you will leave your Sunday, your home, to visit someone in the hospital which is in need, 
when you leave your kids behind to someone else to take care of someone which you know there is a need out there in another city or something like that when you go out of your comfort zone to give someone the opportunity to talk about uh, he or she or uh, or he or she pro or, uh, her problems his or her problems to alleviate her or his heart when you offer your shoulder just just because another way it's looking for those who suffer on the body par paralysis or in pain on the hospitals or something like that we can help these persons driving them around. We can help these persons being with them, being friends of these kind of people, which usually are the forgotten ones, are the ones that no one pays attention. Just being friends with th someone like that is going to make a totally difference on that person's life. Another way is to understand and to forgive one's errors. What a challenge, huh? But that's a very good one. Because once we can complete this challenge over here, we're going to be being good. I can, can assure you, once we, we, we overcome this, that, become, that means that we had become a much better person. We also can be compassionate to bring your love for the empty hearts. A word, a call, an invitation, some kind of a small gesture that you do for someone that you don't even know very well, that you don't know deeply, but you know that person is feeling alone for something. A co-worker, which is always having lunch by him or herself alone. A co-worker that is not involved with uh, somebody else's or on the parties, on the, on the break rooms, or in the water cooler, or something like that. A co-worker that no one's get along with. We never know what is going behind that person's life. We all have our issues and our struggles. We just don't know how bad it is until we, we, have, we, uh, uh, we get closer to those persons. We can be compassionate when we support and we protect the children. Not even just protecting with the embracing or helping those kids, but when give the examples to support and to protect a child is to give to that child good examples very good behaviors that a child that can exemplify or look into that and see wow I can be I can I want to be just like that person what I want to do the exactly the same things that that person is doing to me when you become a role model to a child you are supporting and helping and protecting that child because you are keeping uh, that child away from the other influences that we have on our earthly life is today Protecting a child is not just bringing their child back home with you, uh, hugs and kisses, and put in a good school and buy, buy good food. No, it's even much more than that. That doesn't cost a penny. To protect a child doesn't cost a penny. To be compassionate is also help with the money and bless with the words at the same time. at the same time. Because sometimes someone looks for you, oh, you know, I need $10 over here to buy uh, some snacks at the church over there. Uh, the chocolates, please don't touch, they are already mine, okay? That's, that's not for sale, that's, uh, that's already have uh, a destination for that. But I need some money over here, oh, okay, here, $10. You don't even ask why. Well, why you need $10? Is there something else that I can do for you? What is wrong with you? Why, why are you going through that? So when we offer the money, a good way to show compassion is also blessed with the words. Uh, we can be compassionate, don't being afraid, and don't be ashamed of doing that. Because sometimes we don't do that. We don't, we don't practice that. Because, you know, I'm afraid. I don't know exactly what I'm getting into myself into. I don't know what is, uh, what is going to be the outcome of that. I don't know that person very well. Well, somebody told me this, somebody told me that. And, um, you know, if I do that, what are the other persons are going to tell me? What are the people in the office going to say about it? So and we feel ashamed of that. Why? Why should we be ashamed and showing love, which is the most powerful feeling 
that we have on earth. Why should we be afraid of that? And also, on a way to practice, these things over here that I just said can be easily translated to these. I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. All of what I just said can be translated into that. So it's no secret for any one of us. But as I said in the beginning, sometimes we just need to be reminded about those concepts and those things, which is not that much complicated to put in practice in our lives. And to wrap up our meeting tonight, what, is, what are the rewards that we can collect? How, if we start to practice compassion and walk towards charity, what are the rewards that are we going to be collecting to ourselves and to our, our lives? Compassion and pity, when deeply felt, are acts of loving. Love is devotion. Devotion is the forgetful, forgetfulness of self going out of your comfort zone. And it, it is combining with a mitigation in favor of those less fortunate than ourselves, which is the height of virtue. It was that virtue which the divine Messiah practiced throughout his entire life in which he thought in his saintly and sublime doctrine. When this doctrine is fully restored to its original pureness and when mankind submits itself to it, then the world will become a happy place wherein will reign harmony, peace, and love. So what is the ultimate reward that we're going to have practicing that feeling? We're going to be helping to change this world for a much better place. And most important of all, we're going to be changing ourselves to much better persons and we be candidates to stay on this earth because as Jesus has promised us, the earth, now, um, on one of the Beatitudes, uh, the humbles will inherit the earth. Is that the one? Thank you, my consciousness. You know, that's why I have another conscious with me over there. Sometimes my, my fails because, you know, it's way too much information. But I have my friend over there, which has always reminds me that. Thank you, David. So when we say that, if we practice this, we'll be candidates to be staying on this earth on a much better place, on a much better way, with a much better life. It's our option. It's, our, it's in our hands how we're going to be taking our, our free will from now on. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you for your time, and I hope to see you guys sometime soon. Thank you.